Good evening, everyone. Welcome to evening prayer today, Friday, 20th of July. Commemoration to Margaret of Antioch, martyr of 4th century, and also Bartolome de las Casas, apostle to the Indies in 1566. O Lord, make speed to haste to save us. O Lord, may haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal amongst us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, you living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praises throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We leave part of Psalm uh, 119 because you know that's that one is very long. We read from verses 129 to 152. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The opening of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and draw my breath as, as I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Order my steps by your word, and let no wickedness have dominion over me. Redeem me from early oppressors, so that I may keep your commandments. Show the light of your <coughs> countenance upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes run down with streams of water because the wicked do not keep your law. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. You have ordered your decrees in righteousness and in great faithfulness. My indignation destroys me because my adversaries forget your word. Your word has been tr uh, tried to the uttermost so, and so your servant loves it. I, I am small and of no reputation yet do i not forget your commandments your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is the truth trouble and heaviness have taken a hold upon me yet my delight is in your commandments the righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting oh grant me understanding and i shall live i call with my whole heart, answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. To you I call, O save me, and I shall keep your testimonies. Early in the morning I cry to you, for it, your word is my tr tr uh, word is my trust. My eyes are open before the night watches, that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give me life. They draw near, <laughs> near that in malice persecute me, who are far from your law. O oh Lord, I'm near at hand. I know your commandments are true. Long have I known your testimonies that uh, you have founded them forever. Amen. Um, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. I mean, I'm going to read the reflection for this whole psalm, although we read only a small part of it. This, this psalm celebrates the gifts of God's law, this to, uh, his Torah, his covenant instructions for his people. Having redeemed his people and brought us through grace into relationship with him, God now lovingly instructs us in the way to enjoy fullness of life. Although no one keeps God's law perfectly, and in fact we abuse it throughout legalism and works and works righteousness, the psalmist reminds reminds us throughout the, this lengthy psalm of the delight that the law should be for the child of God. 
The psalm uses different words to describe the law, such as statutes, rules, commandments, law, word, and other similar terms. This reflects the richness of the Torah and the flour flourishing life into which it brings us. We tend to view God's law as inhibit inhibiting human flourishing. C.S. Lewis helps us in his words to a friend in a 1933 letter. God not only understands but shares the desire which is at the root of all evil, the desire for complete and ecstatic happiness. He made me for no other purposes than to enjoy it, but he knows, and I do not, how such happiness can be really and permanently attained. This is why God has given us his law to guide us into full happiness as we trust and follow him. Lewis goes on to say, I think we may be quite, re uh, I think we may be quite rid of the old haunting suspicion in in, it rises its head in every temptation that there is something else than God, some someone other country into which we forbid, uh, he forbid us to trespass some kind of delight which he does uh, doesn't appreciate or just chooses to forbid, but which would be real delight if only we were allowed to get it. The things just isn't the thing just isn't there. Whatever we desire. Is, is either what God is trying to give us as quickly as he can or else a false picture of what he's trying to give us a false picture of which would not attract us for a moment if we saw the real thing Amen Alright We move on to the New Testament reading I would read something from Matthew. I quite like it. Matthew 5, 3, 10, verses 3 to 10. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We are in Second Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 15 to the end. So that's verse 15 to 17. But if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but to some extent, not to exaggerate it, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person. So now instead of you should forgive and console him so that he may not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I urge you to re reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this reason to test you and to know whether you are obedient in everything. <laughs> Anyone whom you forgive, also I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his design. When I came to Troas to proclaim the good news of Christ, a door was opened for me in the Lord, but my mind could not rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said farewell to them and I went to Macedonia. But thanks be to God who is in Christ, always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads in every place the fragrance of, that comes from uh, knowing him. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not 
peddlers of God's word, like so many, but in Christ we speak as persons of sincerity, as persons sent from God and standing in His presence. Amen. Amen. If it's not foxes or birds or, or rain, it's going to be my kids dropping stuff from the windows. I mean, there's always <laughs> something that's going to disrupt me. Um, but that's more fun. Anyway. Okay, so we, we proceed with um, Paul. Um, Second Corinthians. He starts talking about what is he talking about in the beginning. There's a story um, in First Corinthians chapter five. Like we said, uh, like I said, this is the first letter um, he wrote to them. Now in sec we are in Second Corinthians. So there's a story in First Corinthians chapter five where they were talking about a guy who was um, sleeping with his mother-in-law, and they were quite accepting to begin with. Um, just, just so I, I heard there's a lot of things I heard now we think the first thing we think oh wow this is this is horrible but you know the, in, the, in their culture in their culture then I think that it was acceptable in a way but not with, within the church communities within the Christian communities but in, in general the Gentile culture you know things like if the if, if the man, if the husband died, then another man from the family should marry the woman, things like that. I heard this, um, I don't know how true that is, probably it was acceptable to some extent, but I'm not sure in terms of um, your mother-in-law, I'm not sure about that. But that was clearly not acceptable for the church, uh, for Paul. And he said to begin with, um, you know, um, when you, you, you are accepting to all and even even him you're accepting you're tolerant uh yes no problem but but then paul said turn try and talk to him if he doesn't listen to you um then turn him turn him to satan which means uh cut him out um um from the congregation from the church uh send him out so then maybe he will get to his senses for a little bit uh, so he will get to his senses he will miss the church he will miss the lord and evidently this is what's actually happened here um because this guy is always saying uh welcome him back uh, apparently he has repented and he he's saying no 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 i will not welcome him back open your doors don't don't do this for too long now um he has repented bring him back um Paul says don't basically let the devil divide uh, and conquer because that's what the devil wants to divide and conquer this is goes for everybody it goes for churches it goes for your families uh, children and parents you know everybody the, the the devil would be quite happy if you guys all of us are divided because then we united we're stronger we pray for each other we look out for each other divided um, we are much weaker and much easier to conquer. Verse 12, Paul changes the subject. Um, he, he, he's talking about he went to find Titus in Troas, Troas and he couldn't find him there. And the, um, But the Lord was opening doors. Uh, things were happening. He was serving. Great things are happening. But he didn't have peace of mind. He needed to fight to find his friend, Titus, because... Um, he needed to receive a report from him. He was the one who was bringing the message to Corinthians. He had to come back with a report of how this was received, perceived by them. And he was quite anxious to hear about that. That he, um, So he tracks down Titus and he gets the news that most of them responded quite well. Not all of them, but most of them responded quite well. And he says, thanks be to God in verse 14 here. It's great big triumph over the enemy. Titus brought good news and he was overjoyed. Not everybody, like I said, were, responded well uh, to Paul's message, of course, and they were, um, but the, you know, those that didn't respond, they were not doing so great. 
but he speaks um, um, uh, sorry yeah I, I still yeah lost my place in my notes um, what I was trying to say those that wanted to respond to his message that those were the open open minds open hearts they did respond to his message um, and those who did will be you'll find Jesus and be saved um, those that didn't uh, hopefully they got there eventually but you know maybe there was some that uh, decided to completely disregard everything he was saying and say who is he for what apostle he's nobody he's not apostle he's he's a cheat or whatever we're not gonna listen to him and unfortunately yeah that didn't go well for them so this is what in this specific passage this is what Paul was saying I was really overjoyed and really happy about finding my friend and him giving me good news uh, from you guys and from the first uh, letter um, this is a second letter that we're reading and we're gonna continue with this tomorrow okay the collected to, to, for today almighty and everlasting God by whose spirit the whole body of Christ is governed and sanctified hear our prayer which we offer for all of your faithful people that it, it, that their vocation ministry they may serve in holiness and truth to the glory of your name through the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen we say together the Lord's Prayer our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen and God uh, thank you we pray thank you for for this day thank you for all of us who managed to be here today uh, thank you for everybody who is uh, your child and everybody who has found you and thank you for everybody who will thank you for your love thank you for reaching out um, and finding all of us thank you for never giving up thank you for people like Paul um, who was relentless and fearless in his preaching and he only cared about you you were the center of everything jesus and he was preaching your word as it was meant to be preached and he would this is why he was winning so many people thank you for, for them god thank you for all the apostles thank you for choosing all of us to serve you and give us boldness and fearlessness how i have to do it and how to be good in, in serving you jesus and give us your joy because we know if we follow you if we are called your children if we accept you and we follow you then definitely you're gonna give us your joy and your peace we pray for anyone who might be sick or uh, unwell in any way today we pray for your mercy Jesus look after them and also your look after them and also yeah, their families and God we pray for peace around the world we pray for salvation for all these people that are suffering and we pray for the end of all these natural disasters then fires and extra heat and all these things happening that's causing many people to die we pray for your mercy we thank you for this wonderful day and for the chance to be alive and for the chance to be happy and have our families around us. Help us to serve you. Help us to have the attitude of servants. In your precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Bless you, everybody. Have a good night's sleep, um, and we'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow, Thursday. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bless you. Bye.